All right, let's get back into it. Episode 16 for Umineko. Um, Not too much to say about last episode. Uh, Balor's taken a pretty solid seeing is believing tactic here as far as all the supernatural stuff goes, and that's uh, completely reasonable. Maria continues to get creepier as things go on. To be expected after uh, after what we've seen so far. And, um, yeah, lots of things we can investigate, lots of ways we could go from here. Let's see what happens. After a meal, some people tend to head to the bathroom, while others prefer to relax a bit. It seemed that several people had left the parlor, just like I did when I went to the kitchen to drink some water. Yeah, quote-unquote drink some water. In the end, Anatsu, he reluctantly retracted her order that everyone remain packed in the parlor, on the condition that no one headed out on their own or strayed too far. So you gotta bring a buddy? She's probably still clutching that shotgun to- oh yes she is. Not a shotgun, a rifle. But yeah. She ain't gonna let go of that for her life. In any case, if 11 people are shut up in the same room, Starting early in the morning, the air will start to stagnate. Also, quite some time has passed, so everyone was starting to recover from the shock of that morning, and their sense of danger might have been awakening too. Weakening. However, it was a certain fact that six people had been killed inside the mansion, so no one was completely negligent. So whenever they went out into the hallway for a breath of fresh air, trying to act tough, they would quickly get scared of standing there isolated and would eventually return to the parlor. Yeah, I mean, most of them should be scared shitless. There's like a massive body count that just happened today. I guess it's like the north wind and the sun. If you force someone to stay shut in, they'll resist. But if you tell them to do whatever they want, they'll come back obediently. People really do not like... People really do like not doing what they're told. When the servants finished cleaning up from the meal, they returned obediently to the parlor, just as Aunt Natsuhi had told them to, and sat on the sofa near the entrance, patiently awaiting orders. Maria, almost as though she had suddenly finished playing witches, had returned to the pure Maria I knew well, saying, Ooh, ooh. What in the world happened back there? It's a good question. I hadn't felt even an atom of the presence of this person called Beatrice, who was supposedly standing behind me invisible. However, it felt like I'd glimpsed a little in of that presence inside Maria. Right, yeah, I mean... Is the Maria we know now conscious of that behavior before? Is it all one person and... Like, could this be an act the way she normally acts? Or is it really just like Beatrice's influence... Taking hold of her for short amount of time? Not like possessing her to the point where Maria is Beatrice, obviously, but... Just changing Maria's personality like on a fundamental level. マリアちゃんは魔女とかの話になると人が変わるね。昨日海岸でバトラ君も見たでしょ。あの、サソリのキーホルダーの時か。あや。あんな機嫌を損ねるみたいな感じになったよ。いや、we're Apparently Jessica had spotted that ki hee 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 Maria a few times. I just happened to catch it at a bad moment and was pretty freaked out seeing it for the first time. Is that all it is? A bad, bad moment? Like what? That's the question. One or the other. 
そういうのじゃないと思うよ。You don't think it's them? バトラ君にも経験ない小さい頃、自分以外の誰かになりたかったなんてこと。When humans are born, no one has any individuality. However, when they reach their growth period, their sense of self starts to be born. They want to be different than other people. But since everyone else in their class is learning the same things at the same rate and being forced into the same lifestyle, of course they aren't going to find anything that makes them different from everyone else around them. Once they realize that, the first thing they do is start breaking the rules in what's called their rebellious stage. Since everyone else follows the rules, they want to show off their individuality by breaking them. So, even those who try to act tough, mocking everyone around them and calling them childish, can actually be viewed as cute kids searching for themselves, if you look at it this way. Well, I'm lecturing about all this like I'm so smart, but I actually got it secondhand from George Anarchy. I myself was one of those embarrassing guys who thought it was cool to act like a little bastard. Well, that was when I, at, I was at the age where you try to show off for the opposite sex. 成長期の根底には子供から脱却したいというひよこが殻を破るのに似た衝動がある子供と大人の違いは何かわかるかいねえねえブレインデベルメントそれとも体格違うよ経験だよ、okay. 大人が子供を見下すのは人生経験が少ないからだよ子供が何を言っても鼻で笑ってしまうのは世間知らずのくせにと見下しているからだよああそういうのわかるぜ I mean, it's usually true. 子供の頃って妙に人生ってもう悟りきったようなことを口にして、yeah. 年長者ぶりたくなるよな大人は子供が何を言っても世の中甘くないとか社会に出ればわかるとか鼻で笑ってる。まあ実際そうなんだけど子供的にはそういうのって見下されてるみたいでムカつくんだよな、right. なるほどな知識や経験の有無か確かに年齢だけ無駄に食ってても尊敬はされねえよなとなるとつまり子供から脱却したいという衝動を持つ時期にかつ他者とは違うという個性を持ちたくなる子供からの脱却がつまり知識や経験なのだとしたらなるほど他人の持ち得ない知識を持つことが一つのアイデンティティになるわけか小学校の頃なんかさクラスの誰も知らないことを知っていたり持っていたり身につけていたりするとヒーローになれたよなバトラもそういう経験あるだろあるある何か一芸に秀でたいと思うお年頃って確かにあるななるほどそれが子供からの脱却つまり成長期ってわけか、okay. 健全な意味での成長期はそうして没個性を脱却するために人が持たない知識やスキルを身につけることを促す Where are we going with this? Are we trying to relate this to Maria's、um, decision to learn about the occult and stuff? This is a very interesting thing to do. The people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in まあ、個性がネガティブに働くこともあるぜクラスみんなが真剣に勉強してるから俺だけはサボって目立とうとかよ OK that last bit really was true about me <laughs> It's only recently that I've been able to thank the middle school teacher who slapped me after school でもまあ誰も飛べない飛び箱を飛んでやりたいとか成績のいい連中を周回遅れにさせてやるぜってマラソンで全力疾走とかそういう気持ちはあったな Yeah, a lot of times kids in their rebellious phases you know 
do things that don't really have much of a reason. Like, they wouldn't even be able to explain to you why they're doing it. It's just like. ちゃんと成長期してるな、俺。男子ってやっぱり肉体的な方面に関心が向くよな。でもよ、同じ時期に女子は精神的な面に向きやすいんだよ。バトラーのクラスの女子にも<笑> <占いとか霊感とか、そんなこと言ってる女子連中の文化は? 笑> it seems to be more of a common thing in like anime visual novel mediums that girls seem to really like the horoscope and the you know yeah like the spiritual fortune tell that seems to be really common in these mediums like as opposed to real life unless it's a japan thing and it's common in Jap more common in japan but i feel like i never saw that growing up in anyone it was always just kind of laughed at See, that's no matter which class you go to, fortune telling. Like, what is that? Is that a thing? It'll be interesting if in this, like, you know, in the setting of this game, of this world, you know, that becomes something that's, uh, has some legitimacy to it. Oops. I mean, girls do the rebelling too. <laughs> You're seeing boys act tough and rebel against adults. Girls start fortune telling. That's exactly what I thought, too, of course. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, まあ、so you could brag about something without having to work hard or study. I see. Isn't that a kid's greatest dream?
その願望の姿が別人格として形成されることが少なくない I mean you talk about make believe right George like it is not common for kids to develop alternate personalities unless you're talking about like hey, here's my make believe friend or they act you know kind of chuny-ish and they're you know just playing around you're saying it's not rare for a kid's desired self to become an alternate personality Batra-kun that the Okay, we're talking about the real. We're, we've gone away from like the witch thing, and we're just talking about how you act on the inside versus your social shell you put on almost. Okay, well, that, I can understand where you're going from there. 自分のなりたい姿の投影で家の自分は本来の姿だからつまり、okay. キャラクターの使い分けというか Just because we were talking about Maria in that 180 change personality I was thinking about it too like harshly like I wasn't thinking just like you know Change your, a few of your traits that you'd prefer other people to see about you. Of course, that happens. All the time. It's not really a whole new personality, is it, though? Can you really call it multiple personalities, or is it more just, you know, tweaking your real self to, you know, how you want to be viewed by the public? オカルトが好きな女子はそれを憑依と言ったり覚醒と言ったりするぜ中に正直ドン引きするくらいにキャラを変える子もいるよ何しにもいるだろう。切れたとか言ってやたらめったら粗暴キャラに変身するやつが<笑>あれ本人はかっこいいと思ってるんだろうけど見てて痛いよな、yeah. つまりおさらいするとだ。Can be pretty cringy. マリアくらいの年頃の女の子が、さっきみたいな不気味な二重人格みたいなのを見せても、それほど珍しいものじゃない。I mean, どう言いたいのか ？To that degree, it is unusual thing, unless we're just looking at this as a cringy, chuny type thing going on. 簡単にまとめるとそういうことだね。Uh, to that degree. アイデンティティは自己を形成するための大切なものそれをバカにしたりするとかえってその殻に閉じこもってしまうこともあるだからほどほどに付き合ってあげるのが大切なんだよそれを丸ごと受け入れてあげるのが親の包容力というものなんだけどね<笑>兄貴それで独身って信じられねえぜ。うう、don't、whoa、don't bring that up right now。子供が中学くらいに上がってそうな貫禄さ。I can't believe you're single。you know、cause the girl you proposed to yesterday is dead。うん、じゃあ、ローザ。Oh, we're not gonna。あのマリアの二重人格。ちょっよく知っていたのかな。fucking awful that was to say right now <laughs>。like Jesus。Oh my god, we're just gonna blow by that, huh? ここ I can imagine, yeah. Is、oh, she already hated the oo-oos? I imagine a whole. Maria が Okaruto の話を始めたり、魔女みたいな声で笑い出したりすると、必ずビンタしてたぜ。If she'd slap her over the. Ooh, ooh, thing. I can easily see it happening if she like went full like witch mode in public. And so she didn't really learn her. So she's been doing this. That's really interesting. That this is like been a recurring thing. It's not something that's just 
coming over her because of the situation we're in and maybe there's some Beatrice nonsense going on. Like, this is really something she's been doing for a while now. And Rosa has already been trying to, you know, stop the behavior. Maybe that thing back there was just a little game from a girl facing her growing period. Just a girl trying to show that she was different and independent by holding interest in witches in the occult. And since she wanted to be different from herself, young as she was, she was switching between her normal personality and the personality of her ideal, a witch. At first, I found that very disturbing. But after being lectured by George Anarchy, I felt like this was a path everyone walked down at one time or another. Hmm. I haven't told anyone, but when I was in kindergarten, I joined up with a little gang of kids trying to form an Earth Defense Force saying we'd help protect the peace on Earth. I mean, that's just like make-believe fun time. My face turns red when I remember it now. During what we called a battle practice, what we called battle practice, we would chant EDF, EDF. That's, you're in kindergarten though. No one cringes at that. It's just kids having fun. Maria is about 10. Just like usual, Maria was relaxing, immersed in the TV, oo-ooing and laughing just like any girl her age. But on the inside, another personality that of the ideal witch she respected and blindly accepted was sleeping. But that wasn't anything extraordinary. It was perfectly natural for a girl her age. Um, mm. I don't think I agree with that, but... I feel like at her age, if you're... I mean... Okay, if they're playing it off as her playing a game, okay, sure. She takes it too far like her oo-ooing and doesn't know when not to do it and stuff like that. Doesn't know when to, you know, cut it out and act act how she should. Um, then sure, sure. I've calmed down a little. The shock from my bizarre experience in the kitchen just now is fading away. If I hadn't talked to Anarchy and Jessica... I might still be frightened by the idea that an invisible witch is standing right behind me. However, can I really accept that as an explanation for what happened back there? If it had been just Maria, I could have explained it as the fickle delusions of a growing girl. But Genji-san, Kanan-kun, and Kumasawa Bachan had also been there. None of them had denied what Maria said. They silently accepted that Beatrice exists. I was starting to feel a little uneasy. So wait, Battler's implying that he's the only one now who doesn't believe that the witch is here? Really? No one else is doubtful? On Ava's position was that no 19th person existed, that the crime was an inside job tied to the family's quarrels. On the other hand, on, Natsuhi posi on Natsuhi's position, was that the culprit was hiding somewhere outside the mansion. So she rejected the possibility of an inside job and supported the idea that a 19th person existed. And in the kitchen, Maria and the servants had also supported the idea of a 19th person. But according to them, this 19th person isn't human. They said it was an invisible witch carrying out some mysterious plan. Is there a 19th person or not? And is the culprit human or a witch? For some reason, I couldn't just laugh off any of these possibilities. Not even the most ridiculous story about the witch. Man. Hmm. Jessica, Beatrice no story is that I have no idea. Mori 
子供に言うことを聞かせるために親が作った間抜けな階段だと思ってる。でも、そうだと口にはできない空気が屋敷内にあることは否めないな。I mean, using a story that already exists and using it to get the kids to not wander off. おじいさまが。ベアトリーチは存在すると公言されているからね。Sorry, I feel like I'm talking too much this episode. Like I'm not talking too much, but pausing too much to talk about things. 使用人たちは立場上それを疑えないし。クラウスおじさんたちもおじいさまと喧嘩がしたいわけもないから、表向きは口を揃えてる。だから多分、このお屋敷ではベアトリーチェの存在を疑うことは。ある種のタブーだと思うんだよ。Okay. 年に一度しか来ない僕たちと違ってね。そうでしょ。Jessica took a deep breath in admiration. It looked like Anarchy had guessed right. ジョージ兄さんの言う通りだぜ。みんな腹の中じゃ信じてるわけじゃない。でも、表向きはその存在を認めてる。Okay. ほら、神様の存在を認めるような、そんな雰囲気だよ。Still around the mansion, it's just an unspoken rule that you、um, outwardly accept the existence of Beatrice and you don't talk about whether you doubt it or not. You keep that, you know, deep in your head. 実際にはいないことを知ってても、それを口に出して否定したら、野暮みたいな空気だな。使用人たちの間ではどういうことになってんだやっぱり雇い主のじいさまがいるって言ってんだからそれに口調を合わせてるわけかさあ詳しくはわからないけど使用人たちの間ではベアトリーチェの話はある種の怪談扱いになってるよ<笑>ほら昨日海岸でシャノンが話してくれたろ夜見回りをしている時不気味な何かを見かけたとかそういう話。She did say something like that, didn't she? Back then I thought she was just being really nice to help improve Maria's mood. But it felt like she was serious when she said it. Well, Oh, when she said she saw butterflies, right? I believe that's what the story was. That's right, she definitely said it. She definitely said the same kind of thing that Genji and the rest had all unanimously declared back in the kitchen. Yeah, I remember the butterflies. 夜の見回りの時に見たことがあると言ってました。ベトリスは、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょ I mean, it's probably absolutely true. 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 ただし、敬意を持たないと恐ろしいんだったね。はい。私が勤めを始める直前に、階段を転がり落ちて、腰に大怪我をして辞めた方は、ベアトリーチェ様のことを悪く言っていたそうです
Beller's got to be careful here. That's why Like, if he keeps denying her existence, she's going to get pissed. It's going to push him down the stairs. Of course, even though everyone accepts that curses and the like don't exist in the modern era, people are still afraid and still have a little respect for them. You often see it when, in a residential area, someone is building a house and they call a Shinto priest for a ceremony to honor the god of the, that plot of land. You might think that it was just a big waste of time and money, but it's said that the, if the workers don't do that, a big accident will occur, so they never neglect to do it. I mean, we might even put them at ease, and that allows them to work better, which stops accidents from happening, whereas it might be a bit more tense if it doesn't happen. And so, you know. You also hear about how, if an Inari shrine is carelessly removed during a town replanning, there may be a curse by Kitsune-sama. I think I've read, might have read somewhere, that when the occupying forces were trying to expand an airport, they tried to remove an Inari san that was in the way, and the workers kept getting struck down by mysterious fevers. What's an Inari san? Hold on. Googling Inari san. Oh, it's the, uh, okay, got it. The, um, yeah, those, those orange, I guess they're usually orange, uh, things you can walk through, two pillars and a horizontal pillar on top. Um, is that the thing that disappeared from... It was gone, and Maria was real upset uh, when we arrived on Rock and Jima Island. That might have been it. That might have been what was missing. Even in modern cities like Tokyo, it wasn't rare to see modern buildings packed all around in only Inari Shine, leaving the shrine itself untouched. And this wasn't limited to Japan. It's probably similar to how foreigners baptize, foreigners baptize babies. If I remember right, by Christian doctrine, if unbaptized souls have even the slightest amount of sin, they will still go to hell. Putting water on a child's forehead doesn't do anything but make them cry. But if by doing just that, the parents can prevent their children from going to hell, they will happily go through that with that ceremony. In short, even in this modern society of reason, we were still unable to throw away every trace of belief and fear. You could even say that we accept certain sorts of supernatural things, though in a passive way. Maybe the only difference on this island is that Beatrice is the object of that worship. Huh. Okay, so Battler's still trying to like reason with himself at how like or why you know the the staff are so, like, convinced that Beatrice Sama is a real thing and act like it's a real thing. He might say, oh, even if they know deep down on the inside it's not, they have this thing ingrained with them, you know, you can't get rid of it completely. Yeah, I mean, that's common. You explain away things... They usually have explanations as a supernatural occurrence just because it's something to blame. Shannon-chan 
確かジェシカは朝出かけようとしたらカバンが見つからないのもベアトリーチェの仕業だってふざけてたんだよねよく覚えてるな普通なら妖精さんが隠したとでも言うところがこの島ではベアトリーチェがになるってだけの話だぜまあそんなくったらない話さこのお屋敷も築30年くらいになるそうだからね I feel like this conversation almost in vain because I believe that Beatrice is real like for the sake of how long the story is you know I mean you see Beatrice's sprite when you buy the game next to like her and Battler are the two like on the cover of the game right when you get it on Steam or whatever so she's gonna be around um so I'm not sure I mean we're talking so much about possibilities of things you know not being real but why they people might believe in them and all that but Beatrice is real in the context of the story I'm pretty sure so it's weird that we're spending so long trying to explain it away so cool チェスバンを引っくり返すぜ。オッケー。この事件は魔女の仕業だとアピールしてることになる。つまりそれは19人目の仕業ですよと訴えたくて仕方がないわけだ。気に入らねえぜ。オッケー。全然気に入らねえ。気に入らないって何がだよ。仮に不可視の19
18人の中にいるとこう言いたいのなんだかぶっ飛んだ発想だな、うん、まだおふくろの屋敷の外に不審者が潜んでいるって話の方が信憑性があるってもんだぜ、yeah. まさかバトラーはこの客間の中に犯人がいると疑っているのかよいだよし、やしだよ。何者かが、俺たちにベアトリーチェが存在すると、ミッツソンさん。ゆうべのあの手紙から、もう事件は始まっていたの証拠も根拠も何もないけどな。チェスバンを逆さにした限りじゃ、俺の見立てはこんなところだ。まくってるにもほどがあるぜ。妙な推理小説の読みすぎじゃねえのかよ。でも、無視できない着眼点もあるね。十九人目がいるかいないかは別にしても、その犯人は確実にこの島のルールにのっとって、何かを仕掛けてきている。僕はね、今バトラ君の話を聞いていて、少しだけ気持ち悪いことを思い出してたんだよ。うんうん。気持ち悪いことってうん覚えてるかいベアトリーチェの手紙ベアトリーチェは利子の回収を行うと言っていたねそして利子とは後ろ宮家の全てだと言った Right I remember that now Jessica and I thought back on what Maria had read aloud the previous night 言ってたぜ確かに言ってたそして利子の回収をこれから行うが黄金の謎を解いたらその権利を失うとも言ってたよなおじい様は黄金を授かり後宮家を再興したつまり黄金を資本に生み出したもの全てが利子だってベアトリーチは言っているつまり冗談きついぜ兄貴 It's plausible. まさか後ろ宮家のすべてつまり、Includes. じいさまが生み出したものすべてってことは、yeah. じいさまから血を分けた一族のことを指すってのかよ、Everyone. あの手紙をそう読み解いたならこの殺人はベアトリーチェが行った正当な利子の回収ということになるとなればこの事件はまだ続くよ。利子の回収はまだ途中なんだからね。Hmm. George turned around looking over the parlor. There were still many people who held the name of Shiremiya. And because Gora san and Shannon chan had been killed, we knew that not even the servants were safe, despite lacking the Shiremiya family name. But. 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 全員を殺すつもりかよでもおかしいよジョージ兄さんならどうして6人だけ他に大勢殺せたはず、yeah, they were to bring the kill as high as possible, 下手をすれば寝込みを襲って全員を一晩で殺すことも可能だったはずどうしてそれをしなかったの特別条項だよ黄金の謎を暴く者が現れたら利子の権利は失われるそして手紙の最後にはこう結ばれていたはずだよおじいさまの黄金の謎をみんなで解いてみろとねジーザスようやく犯人のメッセージが分かってきたじゃねえかつまり犯人は俺たちにじいさまのあの碑文の謎を解いてみやがると言ってるわけだしかもぼやぼやしてればどんどん利子の回収を進めちまうつもりだ Yep I realize this is all based on several guesses that are way out there but not everything that happens in this world fits together in a perfect line Most of the events we don't understand are only individual points By fitting them into a straight line we're beginning to understand When the points at either end of the line are really close, the line itself is more logical and easier to understand. And when those points are really far away, the opposite is true. 
It's the distance between these points that makes us say our guesses are way out there. However, if the distances we span are too narrow, that means our thinking will be narrow too. Is there a difference between making guesses and reasoning? Am I just using easily made guesses to try and force this crime into a pattern I can understand? No, that's not it. When you're lost in the dark and searching around with your hands, what you're doing is relying on your imagination and making guesses. Only imagination can find the points that need to be tied together. Reasoning is nothing more than the act of drawing lines between them. If you can't imagine, you can't reason. What I'm doing now might be the way out there, but I'm sure it isn't a mistake either. Only the power of imagination can pull clues out from the darkness, and then I can use the power of reasoning to tie those clues together. It was a lot like the process of searching out an enemy's weak spot and striking. It's okay if I'm way out there. Find a weak point first, then we can think about how to strike. Right now is the time to find points we can tie together later. Nice. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, that will conclude episode 16. I will stop it here and uh, start a new recording for 17 to keep the sync up. Um, yeah, I mean... A lot of this episode feels like a conversations that might become redundant in the future. I don't know how things are going to go, but if it turns out witches are real and magic is real and, you know, uh, Beatrice just shows up as the 19th person all of a sudden and it's like, ha ha ha, it's me, then it's like, okay, well, we just talked 30 minutes about, like, um you know, all the all the ways people might be using that kind of story to make it seem like it's real when it's really not. Like, it would make it all redundant. So maybe it's going in a different direction than I'm thinking. Maybe it's not going to just be as cut and dry as Beatrice shows up. Voila, magic is real. We were wrong. Um, I don't know how, how it's going to work, but... Um, Always excited to see more. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for listening in. We will continue next time on episode 17. I don't know how much longer I have in, um, in chapter one. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm, you know, almost done, halfway done, somewhere in between those two. I would assume I'm, I, I think I'm more than halfway done. Somewhere, I, I guess I'd probably put myself maybe three quarters or something my guess I don't know obviously just a guess but we're quite a few hours like in now quite a few hours into the game so I would expect it maybe the climax of the first episode to be approaching somewhere within the next several episodes we'll see all right uh Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye.